What's up guys? Today we're going to go over everything you need to know about rails. This will include the normal rails, the power rails, the detector rails, and the activator rails. I will also go over the minecarts that have stuff in them, particularly minecart with TNT and minecart with hopper. So with that, let's jump right in. All right, so starting with rails. So rails are the most simple form of rail systems. Um, they're gravity powered, meaning that the minecart will move downhill. So if we like make a little thing like this, and then have the minecart go down, it will gain speed as we go down. Um, and then it will keep that speed for a little bit of time. There is a little bit of momentum though. So if we increase this um, really far, it will slow down and stop eventually. Um, it can go pretty far, but depending on how much uh, gravity power you have, but it will stop eventually. Um, filled minecarts will go a lot further than empty ones. So like I'm filling it right now, whereas if I just push down an empty one, um, it won't go as far. I don't know why this is the case, but it is. Uh, yeah, so see, like we got all the way to the end, whereas that one doesn't even make it to the corner there. Um, you can go uphill with the normal rails, but it will slow down significantly faster, right? So this is when power rails come in handy. Now, when you have a T with rails like this. So say you're turning here, but you also want to have a turn here. Um, when you place it down, it will choose one side. I think it usually, there's like some rules for that, but I'm not going to get into that. Um, you can change the direction in a T like this by powering it with redstone. Um, and this can be used for, you know, having multiple areas or having a, uh, like a station or something like that. Um, you can't make this rail go this way or straight like that either. Um, as far as I know. So there's no way to make the rail do this when it's hooked up to a T like this. Um, so you have to be a little bit careful with how you set it up, but you can change it like this. Um, if you need a minecart to go from this area to this area, you can in fact actually just push it. It looks a little wonky, but it will work. Um, and likewise, if you go the other way, it will work the other way. So you can still do it even though it's a little janky. All right, so now power rails are a little bit more complicated. Um, I still think they're pretty straightforward, but they have a little bit more quirks. Um, one of the annoying quirks is that they can't turn. Um, so unlike normal rails, that lets you kind of turn however you want. Um, power rails cannot. So you, in, in corners, you have to use normal rails. Um, I don't even think you can use any of the other ones either. Yeah, so normal rails are the only ones that can turn. Um, power rails, you need to power with a redstone signal. Um, that redstone signal will travel quite far. Um, I don't exactly know how far it is, but you can see it pretty clearly when it stops there. Um, so like to save um, redstone, you can go all the way here and then do it as far as possible. Um, so yeah, like here, I'd be maximizing the redstone torches there. Um, power rails will get the minecart to maximum speed. So if I do this and then take a minecart and push it, it will get it all the way up to maximum speed, and it does it, I think, with one rail. I don't think you need any more than one rail. Um, however, if you do this, which is more power rail efficient, then, of course, on the normal rails, it will lose momentum. So it's fine if I'm, like if something's filling it, like this. But if you're sending empty minecarts and they go too far, they will stop eventually. Um, so if I do this and send an empty one, it will lose momentum pretty quickly, and it will stop. Um... Now, unpowered rails, so like powered rails that are unpowered, rather, um, let's get some more speed here, will basically act like a brake, um, which is actually pretty convenient. Um, so instead of acting like a normal rail, they act like a brake. So if I get in here, I get speedy, and then I get basically stop. Um, it might take a couple of them to really fully stop. But there is a very, very uh, high braking force there which lets you essentially like control if you want to stop minecarts at a certain place or if you want them to go. Um, if you power a powered rail when a minecart's stationary on it, it won't go anywhere. But if it's like barely moving or if it has gravity, so like for example, at stations what I use is I use this setup. Um, so then I place the minecarts kind of on this area. Um, then when you power it, it will go off. Um, but again, if you power it while it's stationary, it doesn't move at all. Now, because power rails get you up to max speed, you can get away with a lot of distance with very few power rails. 
So for example, I have this setup right here, and if I send a field minecart um, all the way down, it can get pretty far. It will lose speed, of course, so it will take longer and longer to get going. Um, so obviously you can see it's going a lot slower now, but it's still moving. Um, so you can get away with a lot if you have limited gold, uh, because they're pretty gold intense when you're making them. Empty minecarts, again, they lose momentum faster, so you won't be able to get away with as much. Um, not nearly as much, even. So you have to be careful there. Um, usually what I do is I do it every, like, five blocks or so. So, like, I do, like, a power rail, I do one, two, three, four, five, and then I do another power rail. And this is so that I can send empty minecarts back, because this is just enough to make sure empty minecarts don't stop anywhere. Um, so that's something you can do if you want to save on power rails. If you don't need to send any empty ones, you can actually put them pretty far away. Like, we can even have this entire distance and then just have another one, like, here or something. Um, and the minecart will make it all the way there. Um, assuming everything's flat, of course. Uh, this is all assuming it's flat. If you're going uphill or, um, I mean, yeah, uphill's the only thing, then you'll want to have a lot more power rails. Um, so, like, let's just build it right now. So if we have power rails here, and then we make a little staircase going up, you can still get away with having them spaced, but you can get away with it a lot less. So if we do this, I'm not actually sure how far it goes, so I'll just make it really tall. Yeah, so you can get away with it, but a lot less than you can when it's flat. Um, so in this case, what you do is do it every like five blocks or so. Um, I'm not exactly sure how far an empty minecart will go uphill. Um, not as far, but still decently far. Um, so if you need to send empty minecarts up, you could probably get away with doing it every like four blocks or so. And filled ones probably every five or six. Um, the annoying thing with doing on stairs is you have to power each individual one when you do this. Um, so unlike chaining them together like this and you can power it with just one torch, you have to power each individual one every single time. So that's the only downside there. All right, so now onto the lesser known rails, the detector rail and the activator rail. So the detector rail is essentially a pressure plate on a rail. Um, I believe it acts just like a normal rail in every other capacity as far as the minecart transportation goes. So it'll just like go through, it doesn't like power, it doesn't stop it or anything. Um, however, when a minecart is on top of the activator rail, you can see like the, the redstone's going on there, it will strong power the block it's on top of. So you can grab the redstone signal here or you can grab it on the same level. Um, and then when you push it off, it goes off. So this essentially lets you detect that there are minecarts on the rail, um, which can be useful if you're doing like, I don't know, sorting machines that use uh, hopper minecarts and stuff like that um, to kind of keep tabs on where your stuff is. Um, otherwise, there's not really much else to say about it. I believe it can go up hills and everything like that, just like a normal rail can. Um, you know, so all it is is just a pressure plate on a rail. Now, the activator rail is a little bit different. So what the activator does is it activates minecarts that are on it, and each minecart will have a different, um, a different thing. So one that normal minecarts have is that it pushes you out. And this is when the activator rails are powered, which you have to power yourself. Um, otherwise, they just act like a normal rail also. Um, so if you want like some fancy looking rails, you can just use unpowered activator rails and it does the same thing. But if I power it and then try to get into this minecart, it will push me out. Um, right. Another one is that with minecarts, it will, with hopper minecarts, it will unpower the hopper, or it will deactivate, I rather, the hopper. So if I do something like this, um, and I think it does it permanently until you repower it. So, like, let's set up something like this. And then I'll go dump, dump a bunch of items on top of this. So, if I do something like this, um, and I push this hopper minecart through it, it will pull all of the items. It won't pull these and then it'll start pulling them again once it gets activated. So the activator rail turns off the hopper um, because when you power a hopper with redstone normally, it will deactivate it, and it will do so until you reactivate it with an unpowered activator rail. Um, so it doesn't have to be on powered activator rails the entire time, or else these would have gotten sucked up, um, but you have to go explicitly re-enable it with another activator rail. Um, another minecart that the activator rails do something to is TNT. It will prime it. 
So I'm going to do it this direction into the water. <laughs> um, so if something like this, then we can push the TNT across it. The power rails will push it and the activator rail will prime it. I'm doing it into the water so I don't blow up everything. Um, but yeah, see, so it'll prime it that way. So you can use that kind of as an activated, um, you know, explosive if you're mining with explosives or something. Or if you are trying to, you know, blow up someone's base. No judgment there. Um, so yeah, and that basically that's it. Because the other minecarts don't really do anything. Activator rails with minecarts with chests and furnaces, I don't believe, do anything. Um, and there aren't any other ones that are, you know, there. Um just for the sake of trying it to see, making sure it doesn't do anything. Yeah, I don't think it does anything. Um, and the furnaces wouldn't do anything either. So yeah, that's basically it. All right, guys, that'll be it for this episode. Let me know down in the comments if you have any questions or issues that you have that arise. I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time.